any uh, prayer requests, please don't hesitate to reach Pastor Rick, Sister Resi, or uh, myself, of course, and we would gladly pray with you and pray for you. Women's ministry on this coming Friday, Sister Bell would uh, be the exhorter. And for the men's ministry, this coming Saturday um, at 7.30, I believe still to be announced. We'll get the specifics in the next few days. And next, this coming Sunday service, wow, it's uh, uh, for the worship. We would be led by uh, Brother Toffee and Sister Kame, praise God. Opening prayer are their own brother Keen. Praise God. And uh, to wrap up the um, celebration, uh, Pastor Rick would uh, do the benediction and word as well. Of course, there are three ways to give. Um, first, we could give through tightly. Second, we could give through, um, through uh, in person. Um, I believe we have a drop box at the, at, at the back. And, uh, and lastly, you could also request Sister Test uh, for a pickup and uh, we could surely arrange that one. Do we have other announcements? That's it. Alrighty, um, why don't we uh, come to the Lord as we dedicate and entrust our giving. Father, once again, we come to you, Lord God, and we thank you for the privilege that uh, we could give, Panginoon. We thank you for the uh, blessing that you have given us. Indeed, it's an honor to partner with you with you, Father God, that we are blessed so we could also be a blessing to others. Thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord God, and may this uh, blessing um, extend your kingdom, Father God, and we praise you and we give you all the thanksgiving because you alone deserve the glory. And all God's people say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Praise God. And let's welcome uh, Pastor Daniel as uh, he's going to lead us in worship. Hello. Oh, good morning, everyone. How's everyone today? Good morning to those on Zoom. Uh, I bet you're nice and cozy in your warm houses. As it's snow, I probably, hopefully, the last snowfall before spring officially. Well, I guess spring already has hit us, but the real spring hits us. Hopefully, um, let's just stand up as we um, as we begin worship and. <coughs> Um, it's actually, what is it, a few weeks now from Easter, right? So I thought, you know, it's time to get into the, the mindset and the, our hearts in the right, in the place where we're going to remember the, why we're all here, right? Why we're all redeemed and saved, um, where, why we can say that we're not dead, but we're alive in Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> um, so let's pray. Father God. As uh, we approach the Easter season, I pray that you prepare our hearts um, and that we, 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 we live in remembrance of you, Lord God, of everything that you've done through for us through the cross, <coughs> that we uh, want to live every day in remembrance of your, your work in us. Lord God, we can say this today that <coughs> we were dead, but now alive in you when you called our name. You called us out of the grave. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was beating the night alive. All my failures I tried. It was my sin till I met you. You call 
pray for your Holy Ghost to fall in this room. Everyone's home over Zoom. Pray that you would open our hearts. So that you may fill us with your spirit. service to you from the word. Pray for your anointing. That your spirit, that your word would transform us and mold us. We love you, Lord God. I want to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. God. Hallelujah. Before we uh, proceed with the, um, I would like to pray for our Sunday school. So, kids, would you please just stand? We can see you. How many we have? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, again, thank you for your continuous presence in our lives, O oh God, Lord. Even with our children, you are continuously molding and transforming them to the kids that you want them to be. And, and eventually, they will grow up, O oh God, Lord, into young, fine men and women, O oh God, who will love you, who will serve you, who will honor you, O oh God, Lord. That out of our children, O oh God, Lord, you will raise up godly leaders, godly men and women, O oh God, who will continuously lift up the name of Jesus in their lives and will be a witnesses, O oh God, Lord, witnesses to their peers and friends and family, O oh God, Lord, and been in school. Lord, I pray for your continuous presence in their lives as they go to the sunny school. 
with our teachers and volunteers. I pray also for your uh, anointing upon them, empowerment and patience and love and grace, O oh God, Lord, towards these wonderful teachers who are there to committing their time, O oh God, their talents, O oh God, Lord, to teach our young children, O oh God, Lord. And again, thank you for them, and we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Do I need to move this a bit? No. Am I good on the center? Praise God. Well, once again, welcome. Welcome to all of you. And as our um, Sunday school uh, kids are heading to, uh, to this uh, room, uh, let's just uh, continuously um, acknowledge the presence of each one of us and even those people who are joining us via Zoom. Praise God. Thank you all for joining us. And I'd like to, to make an announcement also that today is the last day of our Zoom uh, platform. Tomorrow and next Sunday will be purely in person. And this is to encourage uh, all everybody to be part of the in-person service. So, and eventually, uh, God willing, we will probably find another platform so that the services will be recorded and may be available for other people. But uh, for now, uh, this will be the last Zoom service. Um, everything else will be done in person. Praise the Lord. Okay, let me just prepare myself here. Well, this morning, I like to do things differently. I like to start with a couple of icebreakers because... Uh, for the last 11 weeks, you've been so serious uh, because we've been, we've been teaching about some serious stuff, right? So today, I'd like to share with you a couple of pastor's jokes. Pastor's jokes. Okay, ready? Ready? What do you call a female lion or a lioness wearing a flowery dress? No guess? They call dandelion. <laughs> so, what is the favorite dance of lions when they go to a party? Favorite dance of lions when they go to a party? Line dancing. Wow, you got it. Oh, that's, those are for lions. How about sheep? Okay. What do you call a sheep that flies to the moon? Spaceship. Yay! Oh, we got a smart guy there. Hallelujah. Okay. Last. What do you get? What do you get when you cross an angry sheep with an angry cow? No. You get an animal with a bad mood. Well, let's get serious now. Let's get serious. I can't believe we are already on our, at the end of our studies on the team, who is Jesus the series. Well, truth of the matter is that when we study who Jesus is from the scripture, it's not only limited to 12 subjects, because Jesus is much more. Jesus is much more. In fact, Jesus is everything in all things, and he is the all things in everything. Does that make sense to you? See, James 1.17 tells us that every good gift and every perfect gift are from above. While we're talking about good gifts, how about the bad things that's happening around us? Is God involved in that? Well, God permits everything. Bad or good, God permits. Amen? So no bad things happen on the face of it without God's permission. Therefore, he is involved in it. So that's why Jesus is everything in all things, and he is the all things in everything. Jesus is the creator. He is Emmanuel. He is the covenant maker, and he is the covenant keeper. He is healer. He is the word of God. He is the lover and keeper of our soul. 
He is the omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God. And there's so much more. But for today, to conclude our series, we will be talking on this title, Jesus, the Lion, and the Lamb. And that's what the icebreakers are for. So let's just jump right into the reading of our passage for today from Revelations 5, 1 to 7. And we will be reading from the New King James Version. New King James Version. If you have your Bible, open your Bible. If not, you can just follow along read from the screen. Revelations 5, 1, 7. Okay. Let's read all together. Please stand. Just give reverence to the Word of God as we read it. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion with the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I look and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. Then he took he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Let us pray. Lord, it's been really a good 11 Sundays of studies from your word. And that speaks about who you are. It's a revelation to some, but it is a reintroduction to many as to who you really are. As I prepare and preach the message, you, you first spoke to me the truth from your word. The nuggets and the treasure of knowing deeper who you really are sinks into my heart first, even before I share the message to your people. And I'm sure my co-messengers share the same sentiments regarding your word. Today, as we conclude this series of studies, I pray that once again you will speak to us and continue to reveal who you are and what you are all about. May your Holy Spirit speak again through me with clarity simplicity and with power that, will, that we will all understand and hear exactly what you have for us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. You may all be seated. Here's the big idea to this preaching today. The big idea is this. Jesus is both lion and the lamb. If we come to know him as the lamb, we don't have to fear him as a lion. If we don't know him as a lamb, he will be more fearsome than the wildest lion. Would you read that again with me? Jesus is both the lion and the lamb. If we come to know him as the lamb, we don't have to fear him as a lion. If we don't know him as the lamb, we will be, he will be more fearsome than the wildest lion. We can actually end here and pray in closing as it already sums up what you and I need to hear today. But let's unpack more what this passage is telling us. What do we know about the lion? What do we know about lion? I mentioned uh, this already maybe in one of our meetings. I love watching the National Ge Geographic Channel. And what I love watching the most is the animal kingdom. I love to see these animals live in the jungle and how they survive their hostile environment. And we all know that lion is one of the fiercest jungle animal you can find. So in fact, tourists who would visit the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania or the Mara National Park in Kenya, they came to see the so-called the Big Five. You know what the Big Five are from the animal kingdom? The lion, the elephant, the rhino, buffalo, and the leopard. The African Lion Safari in Hamilton is a great attraction for the whole family. And their main attraction is going inside the reserve to see mainly the pride of lions. And many times, the lions were resting inside a cave. 
and would not be visible to the disapp disappointment of the tourists. Why? Because they came to see the lions. So, what's the big deal about the lions? What's the big deal about the lions? They are not called the king of the jungle for nothing. What are the lions? Lions are symbol of strength, courage, and have been celebrated throughout history for these characteristics. They are also co uh, common. This are, they are also common symbols for royalty and stateliness. Hence, the praise "King of the Jungle." Ancient Egyptians venerated lions as their war deities due to their strength, power, and fierceness. Lion is a favorite for mascots, and even for team logo because of what it represents. Now, let's talk about the lamb. You won't see lambs in the jungle to coexist with, the, with all the wild animals. See, if you throw in a flock of thousand sheep into the Serengeti, then you're like turning it into a Costco with lots of free samples. The flock of sheep will be gone in a day or so. It will be like throwing a feast to the wild animals. Lambs or sheep are domestic animals which are being farmed for their fleece, lamb skin, milk, and their meat. Sheep or the lambs are the complete opposite in every characteristic with that of a lion. Lions are fearless, confident, cunning, and they command respect. While sheep while sheep are gentle, they're weak, meek, and innocent, no harm to other animals and humans, defenseless, not powerful, not respected, not cunning, and they don't have any sense of danger. That's why they need a shepherd. Lions are territorial animals, but will also invade other territories to have a meal. Sheep are homeless and only will stay wherever the shepherd will lead them. As we can all see, the contrast between these two animals, and yet our Lord Jesus Christ has been described as both. It sounds like an oxymoron or a, of a description about our Lord Jesus Christ being called as the lion and also the lamb. Let's find out why. Let's find out why. The purpose of the book of Revelation, as stated in chapter 1, verse 1, is this. To show his servant things which must shortly take place. It was a vision given by the Lord Jesus to his beloved apostle, disciple John. And for us, the believers, God wants us to believe and prepare for what is to come in the near future. But for the non-believers... The future events is a warning for them that if ignored would mean disaster beyond description and if heeded would mean a blessing that they can share with the rest of those who believe. John, while in the island of Patmos, was in the spirit of God and he saw the vision of heaven and he also saw Jesus. In chapter 5, John also saw a scroll but it was sealed with seven seals then he saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals? In verse 3 it says, And no one is worthy to open its seals in, heaven, in heaven and on earth and under earth. Then John wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. Have you been in a situation where you've been, look, you've been locked out in your own house? Say you're heading to a very important job interview. So you left already because you don't want to be late, but only to find out you forgot an important document that you would need for the interview. You turn back to pick up this document, but the door is locked. And you don't have the key and no one is home to open the door for you. You can also use your imagination with what you badly need to do inside your house, your house, but no one is there to open it. 
You get the idea? Obviously, whatever written in the scroll was very important. That's why John wept much. John wept much. What is the scroll? The scroll. The scroll was, a, was typically 15 feet long in average, and something were written inside. What was written on it? The scroll contains the judgment and redemption of God to all of the earth. John had seen and experienced all the hardship and persecution as a follower of Christ together with the rest of the disciples. He was looking for redemption. He was looking for redemption. He was waiting for an end to all of what's happening to the followers of God and much more for the judgment of the world. The opening of the scroll will give way to what are about to happen. That is God's judgment of all the earth that will lead to the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ and that will also lead to the creation of the new heaven and new earth. John was expecting and he wants to see what are in store for him and the rest of the earth. He knew what the scroll is all about, so he wants the scroll open. I was trying to find a, an image of what the scroll looks like, and this is the best that I can find. It's rolled up and sealed with seven seals. And my interpretation to this is that every seal open, it means you will open up one layer of a, that scroll, and that each layer open reveals the kind of judgment that the earth, that God will pour on the earth. The scroll had seven seals. Each time a seal is open, contains certain events are revealed. We can read that from chapter 6, 7, and 8. Thus, the content of the scroll is revealed pictorially by the events John sees each time a seal is open. Each time a seal is open, a new part of the scroll is revealed. Only Jesus is, was worthy to open the scroll. Only Jesus was worthy to open the scroll. So what makes Jesus worthy to open the scroll? What makes him worthy to open the scroll? Number one is because he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion represents a king who conquers and who is always victorious. Genesis 49 verse 10 tells us, The scepter will not depart from Judah. The ruler's staff will rest securely between his feet until the one comes to, to whom true royalty belongs. All people will honor on and obey him. What is a scepter? A scepter, sorry. What is a scepter? A scepter is an emblem of regal or imperial power and authority. And only the kings hold a scepter. The tribe of Judah is where the Israelite kings would come. And it has been promised from the book of Genesis. Now, tracing the genealogy of Jesus Christ from the Gospel of Matthew, we see that he came from the tribe of Judah. Therefore, Jesus, that makes Jesus our eternal king. That makes Jesus the almighty king. That makes Jesus the most powerful king. That makes Jesus the ruler of over all. That makes Jesus the conquering king who conquered sin and death. Let's give him praise. Is Jesus your king? Is Jesus ruling over your life? See, when people are saved, they easily can claim that Jesus is the savior because they repented of their sins. And yet, the difficult part of it is allowing Jesus to be king and ruler and lord of their life. Only one king rules in a kingdom. Amen? In a, any kingdom, there's the king and there is his subjects. The subjects bows down and surrenders to their king. The subject respects and gives the king the authority over their lives. So who is your king? Is Jesus ruling over your life? Are you just a subject 
or you want to co-rule with Jesus in your life. When you accept that Jesus as your Savior, it doesn't end there. He wants to be your Lord too, and that needs your full surrender to him to rule over your life. There is the saying, if Jesus is not Lord, if Jesus is not Lord of all, he is not Lord at all. Amen? It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. This applies to all of us, to our individual life. We cannot say Jesus is Lord of our life if there are one or two areas we are not surrendering, surrendering to his lordship. If Jesus is not Lord of all, he is not Lord at all. After all, that's how his blessing comes into the lives when we surrender our lives to him as Jesus, as King and Lord over our lives. Amen? Continuing our passage, in verse 5b, it tells us, Jesus has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. When we hear the word prevail, we think of a battle or a war. The word prevail is nikao in Greek, which means triumph, conquer, overcome, or, or be victorious. Jesus prevailed over the enemy of our soul. Who is the enemy of our soul? Satan is the enemy of our soul. Satan is our enemy and he authored all sin and he authored all death. But through Jesus' victory at the cross, he has given his life to those who surrendered theirs to him. No wonder why lion was used as a metaphor, a hyperbole, and a symbol of who Jesus Christ is. So what makes Jesus worthy to open the seal? Not only because he is the lion from the tribe of Judah, but because he is also the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. Verse 6. And I look, and behold, in the midst of the throne of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood the Lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. Not only Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, but he is also the Lamb who was slain. The lamb represents a sacrifice, not just a sacrifice, but a perfect sacrifice. Amen? Christ's victory at the cross is symbolized by his appearance as a lamb standing as though it had been slain. In Revelation 19, we studied this already. Jesus was seen riding on a white horse and wearing a ro robe deep in blood. Jesus conquered sin and death at the cross. The cross was the ultimate victory of God over the forces of sin and evil. In his first coming, Jesus came as a suffering servant. As Isaiah wrote in chapter 53, he said, He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet, who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. He was a son of grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. The Apostle John saw a lamb standing as though it has been it has been slain. Folks, Jesus was slain for us so that we can all live in him. He was the perfect, unblemished sacrificial lamb that was offered as a payment for the sins of the world. Before the Israelites got out from Egypt, God commanded them to slay an unblemished lamb and smear the blood on the doorpost of their home. As we can read from Exodus 12, 1-7, the blood of the unblemished lamb would set apart the people of Israel from the people of Egypt when the angel of death passed by in the night to slay all the firstborn of the land. Those who had the blood of the lamb would be spared. The Israelites' firstborn were spared because of the blood 
blood of the Lamb on their doorpost. Fast forward for the days of John the Baptist. When he saw Jesus approaching, he declares to the multitude, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. Jesus is the ultimate Passover Lamb who saves his people from eternal death. And again, John the Baptist declared, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Only through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross can cleanse us, can cleanse you and me from our sin. The prophet Isaiah declared in chapter 1, verse 18, and this is God's invitation to the people of Judah. He said, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. The sin that you and I have committed produces a stain in our soul that nothing on this earth is powerful enough to remove that stain. Only the blood of Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, can wash away our sin. Amen? Now the question is, is Jesus your Passover Lamb? The song earlier said that we are His upper room. We are His upper room. But the question I would like to ask you today is that, is Jesus your Passover Lamb? The reason I ask is this, because there will be a time when the angel of death will pass by us all, because all of us will have to die one day physically. But if you have been washed by the blood, though you die, and yet you shall live, John eleven twenty five. Are you covered by the blood of the Lamb? Have you been washed by the blood of Jesus? Amen? If Christ came as a suffering servant in his first advent, he will be coming as a conquering king in his second advent, Revelation 7 and 14, and also Revelation 19 and 15. Jesus Christ is both the lion and the lamb. Now the question is, is he really? Is he really both? How could Jesus be both? And this is one of the many arguments why people don't want to believe Jesus who he say he is. How could Jesus claim he is God, and yet all what took place in history was a complete opposite of what a deity should be? We humans, as always, have our own way of thinking and reasoning about many things. Let's see what took place in history. Jesus was born, not in a palace, but in a manger. Joseph and Mary cannot even find a place for them to give birth. So they end up in a barn with animals. Aside from the animals, Jesus' first guests were the lowly shepherds, not dignitaries, not his relatives. Jesus grew up as a carpenter. He did not grow up as a prince. There was nothing special about Jesus growing up as a kid. I said one, two. He gets dirty. He gets hungry. He was scolded by his parents when he cannot be found. Listen to this. Even Jesus' own family called him insane. In March 3.21, when Jesus and his disciples were preaching, and then they cannot even find time to eat. And his family said, he is out of his mind. Just imagine Jesus called by his relative being out of his mind. He claimed to be God, and yet people saw him in the flesh and blood. Jesus was totally just one of them. How could he be a deity? Jesus saw him, they saw him, they heard him, they played with him, and they felt him. Jesus, who claimed to be king, and yet allowed himself to carry a heavy cross to his death. People mock him, spat on him, shoulders slap him with, with disrespect. And they place a crown of thorns on his head. They put on him a scarlet robe in mockery of his claimed kingship. He could have chosen another way of saving his people, another way of dying, but he did not, brothers and sisters. Jesus, while hanging on the cross, bled to his death. 
The chief priests and the scribes mocked him and said, You save others. Why don't you save yourself? If you are the king of the Jews, come down from the cross and we will believe. Just as God could have called legions of angels to annihilate his enemies, and yet he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Was he for real? How could he just keep quiet? How could he let them do that? How could he pray for the forgiveness of those who hang him, who scourge him, who mock him, who spat on him? Our idea of a victorious warrior is someone who stands victorious in front of his defeated foe. Nobody wants to follow a loser. Nobody wants to, to trust a dead hero. How could Jesus claim victory if he died a gruesome and humiliating death? Folks, we know that death on the cross is the worst kind of death fitted for the worst criminal. The Prince of Heaven, the one and only begotten Son of God, humbled himself by coming on this earth he created only to be put to death. How could that be? How could Jesus be the conquering king and be called the Lion of Judah? A lion that personifies strength, power, majesty, as king of the jungle, and yet he showed himself also as a lamb, as though he was slain. Folks, Jesus came to save those that are lost. He came in humility as a lamb that was led to be slaughtered. He died so that we can live. He became poor so that in him we can be rich. He was rejected so that we can, he, we can be accepted. But here's the good news. Here's the good news, brothers and sisters, depending on your spiritual condition. You want to hear the good news? The good news is this. Jesus is coming back. Amen. Jesus is coming back. That's the good news. And what's the bad news? Jesus is coming back no longer as a lamb, but as a lion. That's bad news. Bad news to those who does not have Jesus Christ as their life, who does not re that receive Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. That's bad news to them. When Jesus is referred to as the lion and the lamb, we are to see him as not only the conquering king, who will slay the enemies of God in his return, but also as the sacrificial lamb who took away the reproach of sin from his people so they may share in his ultimate victory. Jesus is the lion and the lamb and is worthy of our praise. Let's give him praise. Now, how do we respond to Jesus? as a lion and the lamb. What is this message for you and for me? What is this 12 series of who is Jesus topics that we've been studying? What is this for you? What is this for me? Now going back to the big idea, we know that Jesus is both the lion and the lamb. That if we come to know him as the lamb, we don't have to fear him as a lion. If we don't know him as a lamb, he will be more fearsome than the wildest lions. Brothers and sisters, God is speaking to each of us this morning. He wants us to meet Jesus as the Lamb of God today. God wants you to accept him as your Savior and to receive his offer of forgiveness and reconciliation to the Father by his atoning sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. There's no other way, brethren. As Jesus said in John 14, 6, is the way, is the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. Without receiving Jesus as the Lamb of God today, will put you in an irreversible situation when He comes back on earth again. Did you hear that? Let me say it again. Without receiving Jesus as the Lamb of God today will put you in an irreversible situation when He comes back on earth again. 
when he comes no longer as a lamb, but as a lion. Isaiah 55, 6-7 tells us, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn, turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God for he will freely pardon. Grace, mercy, and forgiveness of sin will be things of the past when Jesus comes for the second time. He's coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah and he's bringing with him his judgment. And that's what the scroll is all about. The scroll is God's judgment and the lion's fury and fierceness, fierceness to all of the earth. Today is the day of salvation. Do not harden your heart. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Jesus said in Revelation 20, verse 20, 22, verse 20, Surely I am coming quickly. Surely I am coming quickly. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you have Jesus Christ in your heart and in your life? Did you receive him as the Lamb of God that can take away your sin? Folks, especially those people who are joining us by Zoom, because I don't see your face. This offer is for all of us. This offer is for all of you. Would you receive Jesus today as the Lamb of God that only through Him you can be saved? Today is the day of salvation. There might not be another tomorrow. That's why I said today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. When he comes again for the second time, as I've said, there's no more forgiveness. There's no more grace. There's no more mercy. Only judgment. That's why today, you better make the decision that will determine your destiny. And that destiny will be in the presence of the Almighty God. Would you pray with me if you are that person? Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge my sin. Acknowledge, O oh God, that I've been living my life away from you. Today, as I heard the message, receiving, I re I'm receiving Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away my sin. As the Lamb of God that gives me grace, gives me His mercy. As the Lamb of God that will cleanse me and purify me from all of my sin. I receive you, Jesus, today as my Savior and also my Lord. And I'm ready when you come again as a lion of the tribe of Judah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord the best love offering. Before I give the benediction, I have a couple more announcements. Uh, as you've been, uh, it's been announced already that we have a camp. We have a camp in July 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. So if you have not registered yet, we still have a few spots um, available. Um, please register. And mind you, this is a church event, so I'm encouraging all of you to be part of it. If you're thinking of maybe, oh, it could be expensive because of the it's a, I would say, it is a four-star accommodation. It's just my guess. It's a cabin. It's a exclusive for, it's a Christian camp. It's a cabin, and it's exclusive for us. We won't see anybody else there but just us and some staff from the campsite who will be cooking and serving us. So let me tell you, the church will sponsor half of that cost. The, and my calculation is that uh, my initial calculation based on previous, uh, previous uh, contract, if you, there are two adults, then you will only be paying $150 for two adults. Okay? That's just an example of the calculation. So it's not actually much just having a, 
being able to attend a camp like that, all the food are provided and the accommodation. And so it will be, we will have lots of fun. So it will be, it will be uh, July 22nd, 24th. So if you have some friends who would like to join us, but they will have to sleep in a tent. That's the only thing, okay? So invite them. Uh, there's still some spot uh, available. So please register, register yourself. And also with the, uh, what is the uh, youth camp called? Overflow. The Overflow, what's the title? Veritas, Veritas. Also, the church will pay half of it, okay? Just so you know, it's, it's not been announced here, but it's a policy of the church to, to send out people for learning, for uh, uh, encouragement, uplifting. So the church has a budget to pay for those kind of training. So if you are hesitating, parents, if you are hesitating to send your kids because of the, the monetary side of it, church will pay half of the cost. Amen? So let's all stand. Let's give the Lord clap offering. Amen. Let's pray. Father, Amen. once again, we thank you for today. Thank you for the message that you've spoken to us, Lord. Thank you for these 12 weeks of series of studies of who you are, O oh God, Lord. As we've said, O oh God, Lord, that uh, it's not limited to 12 topics only to who re you really are, O oh God, Lord. There's a lot more to know about you, O oh God, Lord, and we know that in the coming days and months and years, we will continue to, you will continue to reveal yourself to us, O oh God, Lord. Again, thank you for the word that uh, has been spoken here, O oh God, Lord. And the words of revelation, I pray that uh, we will live by it, O oh God, Lord. O oh God, to help you, Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your grace and mercy towards us, O oh God, Lord. Hallelujah. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you all.